this one? Okay, what is it?
Isn't it great to be able to come together and worship outside underneath the trees again? Um, I got to thinking, that I think every week y'all are moving further and further and back on me, but I tell you, the joke's on you because eventually you're going to be sitting in the middle of 46. <laughs> and then I think you'll move a little closer. Um, it is good that we are pretending to social distance, but <laughs> here we are doing our best, and I'm glad that you could come out. Um, this is where we need to be, isn't it? Out here worshiping um, and, and just giving thanks to God our Father who, who loves us and, and cares for us. And, and just the fact that we can come together is amazing. I, I want to pray. And just to, as we transition into this time, then after I pray, Brother Mays is going to bring the word today. Um, I know I've heard several comments, jokes, and whatnot about me staying too long or preaching too long. But ha ha, it's not me today. <laughs> so... Uh, but we are grateful that Union could come and be with us today. We had to miss last time because everything was so shut down. But but now we've, we've found a way that we can make this happen, and I'm, and I'm grateful for that. So uh, I'm going to pray, and then we're going to have Brother Mays come up. Father God, Lord, your majesty is truly uncomprehendable for us, but yet we know that it's your glory we come to worship. Father, um, we come before you with so many burdens on our heart, so many trials in our life, and yet, Lord, we know that you allow things to happen uh, so that we will grow in you and for you. Father, even as Brother Mays comes to bring the word, I just pray that you would um, prepare our hearts, Lord, to receive that word as, as a seed, and Lord, uh, I pray that you would water it and that you would help it to grow and help us to mature and to the believers that you were calling us to be. Lord, as Brother Mays comes, I just pray that you would uh, help us to see through the, the distractions of the passing cars and the insects and the wind or whatever it is that Satan would use to, to distract us so that we could uh, hear the word that you have given him. Father, I pray that you would prepare him or that you would give him the boldness to speak the truth that you have laid upon his heart. Or that as we leave here today, we may leave here saying that we have heard from you. So, Father, we thank you for the preparation that Brother Mays has put in. Father, we just pray, we thank you for the, the prayer time that he has diligently put into this sermon, just so that he can bring us the word that you have given him. And so, Father, as we come to worship you, I just pray that you're honored with our attention this morning. For we pray these things in your blessed Son, Jesus' name. Amen. tell it all, but I can tell you that the Lord has been good to me. Let us pray. Our Father, our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, we come this morning in the Amish Mountain that we know how, thanking you for another day. Oh God, thanking you for just allowing us to come together once again in your name. Even though that there are trouble all across the land, but your people's God still have trust and faith in you. Oh merciful God, we ask a blessing upon Wheelock Union Baptist Church 
God, where they may realize that you are in full control. And then, God, we pray for the sick, God, all over this land and country. Praying for the bereaved, God, that let them know that you are too big and too wise to make a mistake. Oh, merciful God, we pray a healing upon this land where they may realize if they turn from their wicked ways that you will heal them. Now, Father, I pray, oh God, that you will touch me where I may be able to speak to your people. And Father, if there is anything that I have said or done, I'm God is sorry. And thank you for another chance to preach your holy word. In the name of Jesus the Christ, I pray forever and ever. Amen. I, I look around and I see some of you in Baptist here this morning. And I'm so thankful, and I am so thankful that we are Baptist Church. Not only about himself, but he's concerned about others. And I can say that because he called me. And the first thing he asked me said, Pastor Mays, are you all right? Is it anything that you all need? You know that's a blessing, isn't it? when you have someone that really cares. And you know, God peoples need to realize that the greatest commandment that he gave us, that we should love one another as he has loved us. I got so much to thank God for because about five and a half months ago, I was laying in the hospital. Wasn't certain that I was coming out. I, now, I didn't have that virus. Don't, don't, don't go looking at that. <laughs> Just don't go thinking that. No, no. But I was laying there. I don't have to come down. Now, I know what's been happening. <laughs> I was laying there, and when they came in and put IVs in my arm, and they said, well, Mr. May, this time, I started saying, Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. They rolled me down the hall, and as I was praying, I was looking at the wall, and I said, I don't know if this be the last time. I said, but Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not want. They rolled me in the room, and they laid me on a metal table, and as they laid me there, they said, Mr. May, you're going to have to wear, wear, put your head all the way back. I said, Lord is my shepherd. If you ever been in that situation, you're going to really call upon the Lord. And when I laid my head back, it looked like he just took the mask and just put it over my face. And I, I looked like I wanted to reach and grab it, but I couldn't. But I went out. When I come forth, I was still saying, Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. The lady said, I don't understand what you are saying, Mr. Mays. I said, Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not want. I got news for you, church. He's a shepherd for all of us this morning. He's a shepherd in the time of need and bereavement. He loves you in spite of what we may be going through. Did you notice this day and time we are going through 
different things. Wars and rules of war. We got the virus going on. We got an uproar. People paying up cities and all of this. And it just breaks my heart to see how people react when things go wrong instead of praying. Then I got to think the last thing that they were doing was the church. But you know what, Christian? We should have the church within us that we should be praying for what's going on around and about us. I, I, I'm not going to be wrong, but I'm, I'm trying to get myself down because it looks like the spirit is so heavy on me this morning. And, and feel like I just want to, Lord, take it off me a little bit because I, I don't want to get the but I want to be able to tell the people. It looks like he said, you're going to have to tell them what I said. You know, I preached up here a few months or maybe a year ago, and, you, and some of you might remember Brother Dave, and thanks be to God to you. I told you that in the last year to come over, I said, you're going to see things that you have never seen before. And if you remember that this thing is beginning to happen because me, myself, I sit and I pray and I meditate and I ask God to open my knowledge up. Give me, God, let me speak it out. He says, since you want to speak it, then you're going to have to fight against the devil. You're going to have to fight against the people that you speak it to because some of them do not want to I have spoken in different places, telling them what they said the Lord. Many of them will tell me, say, how do you know that? I don't know. I'm just speaking what the Lord said. But anyway, this morning in our text, let's go to Acts 9. I, 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 want, to, I want to go there. That nice chapter. And I'm reading from the New Version, the King James Version of my Bible. Read chapter a little bit different. But we, we're going to be on the same page. Acts, that ninth chapter. Convert Paul to Paul. Then Saul still breathing threat and murder against the disciples of the Lord went to the high priest and asked a letter from him to the synagogue in Damascus so that whether men or women he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. As he journeyed, he came near Damascus. And suddenly a light shine around him, around him from heaven. Then he fell to the ground. And heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul. Why are you persecuting me? And he said, What? Who are you, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, who you are persecuting. It is hard for you to speak against the church. I want to stop there. I want to talk to you for just a little while this morning. Jesus is holy. 
read this and follow it. Throughout the Bible, Jesus gives us a invitation to come. Jesus is called. Many might say that I haven't heard the voice, but it is so soft. Pay attention. What your conscience is saying because he speaks to you through your conscience. Jesus is calling. Matthew that 11 and 28, it says, and Jesus invited, he says, he says, Come unto me, all the laboring, heavy burden, gladness. He said, I will give you rest. Many of us are troubled in life because we haven't given our totally life unto Jesus the Christ. I want you to notice that there is something here in this scripture. There are beginnings and there are a end. If you notice where the trouble really started at, over there in that 7 and 54 Acts, Stephen, he was there preaching the word of Jesus. And he was preaching to a bunch of ungodly peoples. And I got news for you, church, that everybody is not going to accept what you tell them in the Bible. So Stephen was preaching the word, and while he was preaching the word, the people got upset. And when they got upset, oh, they got mad. Have you ever seen the people when you preach it, and, and you tell them like it really is, and bring out their sin, and tell them you don't need to do that. You don't need to live that way. You need to turn away. Don't you know they leave the church? But they also watch what they do. They give you a bad name. They say, well, that old so-and-so, he, he preaching. He got in my business, and he shouldn't have done that. But I got news for you. We got to preach the word of God if we want our people to turn from their wicked ways. So Stephen, he was preaching, and they got so upset. He said that they went to grinning teeth and they came towards Stephen and they meant they didn't want to hear it. They didn't want to change their way. But one thing about it, they got so mad until they got Stephen and they took him out of the city and they stole him. And I, I got news for you. Don't you know you don't have to throw a stone, a rock, had nobody to really hurt them. That little deadly tongue that you got can hurt a person. Jesus is calling. Jesus is calling. And we ought to be able to control our tongue because they took him out of the city and they stoned him. But the Bible said there was a young man Saul standing there, and no doubt he was in it on. And they said, the Bible said that they laid their cloak at the young man's feet, and his name was Saul. Look in the Bible. Well, when they done that, they encouraged Saul. Saul got aggressive. 
That's what that, that's the way I put it. That's the way I put it. He 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 he, he got big headed, and and when he got big headed, he decided I'm gonna do more because the word of God will go further if I don't stop it. But I got news for you: you cannot stop God's word. I don't care what you do. That oh God, come down, ladies. You, you, you can't stop God's word and there are some people that, that feel like they can stop the word of God and I got news for you that when they said that this virus was going around, preacher, we ought to have been still preaching. Telling the people that it's alright. Shut down. Oh, shut down. Shut down. But I got news for you. Preach the word. So this young man, he went, the Bible said he went from house to house, dragging those Christian women and men out that mm, was Christian. Change. Putting them in jail. And this is what Satan want to do. Satan want to put the change on you. Satan want to get you in your mind. He wants you to stop serving the true and living God. Saul knew who the Lord was. He knew who the Lord was. And you know, I have seen many. I have seen many. While everything is all right. No. I don't need you, Lord. But don't let things start falling to pieces. They'll start calling on the Lord. So Saul, this is what he done. He went. Somebody throw that Bible. Look at that spear going and throw it on there. He went to the high priest, and when he went to the high priest, he needed a letter. He needed to go down to the master. I want to stop the movement of the gospel. I want to get there before they go there. But what is They were scattered to and for God got a way to move us out of the comfort zone because they went different places and you got to watch the master was a place where there were ships that was going but Saul was small. Saul went to a university. Saul knew this and Saul knew that but he knew the Lord also. I don't care how much education you got. You need Jesus. I don't care where you've been. I don't care what you've been but you need Jesus because Jesus is calling. So Saul went to the high priest and he went to the high priest and he required a letter. He said, I, I need a letter because I need to go down to the master. I, I need to stop the movement out of the Christian. And you watch the high priest. They gave Saul that letter. They gave him that letter. And I, I want you to notice something. When he gave him that letter, more encouragement. Encourage Saul to go a little bit further. Now, I know that since I got this letter, I can go down to the master. I can go down there and I can get them now and nothing be done. But sometimes we get on the road where we think that we are going, but Jesus will stop us before we get there. Saul was on that master road and he had all his army with him. And I don't care who's going along with you. I, I, I don't care how many you got. But Jesus is able to stop you. Many of them say, well, I got this one on my side. I got that one on my side. But Jesus, he don't care. He's more powerful than any man there is. He's more, he, 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 he's one that is able to do all things. They was going. No doubt they were happy. 
We're going down there. We're going to stop the movement of the Christians. We're going we to stop this right now. And, and he had told the priest, said, if they die now, so I'm going to take them all the way back to Jerusalem and I'm going to put them in chain and I'm going to lock them up. So, so on his way. But look what happened. On a beautiful, bright day, Jesus is calling. Beautiful, bright day. And at once, let me put it like this, Saul fell to the ground. Uh-oh. Isn't that something how we can't stand when the Holy Spirit come upon us? Many have many counters yet, but when the Holy Spirit come upon you, you are not able to stand. And when Jesus was speaking to Saul, I got news for you. You cannot stand, you cannot stand in the presence of the Lord because that spirit is so, that Holy Spirit is so strong until you have to go down. So Saul fell to the ground. And when the men that were with Saul, they heard no voice. When Jesus speak to you, he speak to you. He don't speak to everybody else. And I, I, I tell my wife all the time, she said, well, you stand up all night and you in the Bible, but Jesus not speaking to her. He's speaking to me. He telling me to go out and preach the word. I can't, I can't listen to her. <laughs> Honey, honey, you stay up all through the night and you in there at the table and, and you you stand up and, and and don't look like you get much sleep. But one thing about it, I got to preach the word. Because Jesus is not speaking to her, he's speaking to me. Every knee must and ever tongue must confess. I got to give an account of myself because if I know that Jesus has chosen me. Jesus called me to preach the word. And since he called me to preach the word, he said, go out and make disciples. I got to go out and preach God's word. So those men that were with Saul, the Bible says it, did not hear the but Jesus told him, call Saul. And when he called Saul, I want you to notice something. I want you to notice something. Saul knew who the Lord was. Well, well Pastor Mays, Saul knew who the Lord was. In verse 5, you look at that. And he says, who are you, Lord? Who are you, Lord? Now, he knew who the Lord was. Many of us today know who the Lord really is, but we won't call on him until we really need him. I preached a sermon one time a while back and I told him, I said, you use the Lord like you do the spare tie in your car. Everybody looked at me and said, what do you mean? You don't pull that tie out until you need it. And we need to ask ourselves a question. We need to ask ourselves a question. Are we truly converted? Are, are, are we truly serving God in the way that we should serve him? 
And, and you watch. Jesus didn't stop there. He said, I am Jesus. He let Paul, let Saul knew, I, I am Jesus. Look what he says. Who you persecute. It is hard to kick against the person. You cannot kick against what God is doing. Many of us today, we would be better Christians if we would humble ourselves. But the way that it is, we are so bold until we do different things that is ungodly. But look at Saul. Saul, he said, when Saul went to the ground, Saul began to tremble after Jesus had spoke to him. I never will forget when Jesus called me. I'm going to tell you what, you're talking about a young man trembling and scared. I was scared because I heard the voice of Jesus. I heard a voice that I had never heard before. And the voice that I heard, he told me exactly what he wanted me to do. And you know what I've done? The first round, I said, no, I'm not going. But that second round, he said, yes, you are going. Jesus showed me something, and when he showed me something, I, I, I tell you what, I didn't waste no time. I, I called a pastor that I was up under, and I was crying, and I, I said, Lord, I, 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 I said, Lord, and he said, what you say? I said, Lord, I said, well, pastor, I'm ready to go. He said, I knew you were ready to go, but you just didn't come forth. Jesus had called you from the beginning, and you just stood back, and you just held back, and now you're ready to go. You're going to have to take a whooping now in order to go out and preach God's word. So he trembled. The Bible said he trembled. And he began to talk to the Lord. Lord, what do you want me to do? That's me. I'm guilty. Because when the Lord got me, I first thing I hollered after he whooped me, I said, Lord, what, what do you want me to do? Tell me. Tell me, what do you want me to do? I'm, I'm scared. I, I'm, I'm nervous. And what do you want me to do? And many times in our life, we never question. We just, mm. So sorry. Then Jesus said to him, don't lay there. Don't lay there. Can I tell you something? I don't care what you have done, where you come from. I don't care. Don't lay in your mistake. Rise up. Rise up. He told Saul, said, rise up and go into a city. The same city that you were going into to try to stop the movement of it. I want you to go to that city. Go ahead. You started. Go ahead. But I'm, go ahead and do it. Go ahead. I'm sending you to the same city and you watch. Sometimes the Lord will send us <laughs> to people that we cannot stand. Uh -oh, y all, y all, listen, let's do this. Jesus will send us to people that we cannot stand. We have to get in the presence of them because Jesus has sent you there in order to let them know who you really are. How can we love one another and we can't hear the voice of Jesus? Go to the city and you will be told what you might must do. Get to me, church. I'm coming close to the end. I'm still trying to hold myself because I want to, I want to, I want to really, really I'm, I'm just going to try to make this teaching here. I don't want to get a little here this morning. Go to the city. 
go and do what you do. He said, when you go to that city now, say, I want you to don't turn left, don't turn right, but go to the street to call straight. <laughs> oh, God. Holy Spirit. You know, many times we come to church do we really mean or know the reason that we are coming to church for? Go to the city. Go to the street they call straight. Don't turn left or right. Have you noticed so many things have got in our mind and so many things that got our attention that when we start the church sometimes, uh, y'all know what I mean. I, 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 I would go this morning, but I need to do this. We need to make that left turn. He said, go to the street to call straight. And said, there will be a man there. And, and his name was Ananias. And said, he already waiting on you. I got news for your church. There are somebody that is waiting on you to come in order to tell you how good and how great Jesus really is. But before he went to the street to straight, you watch what happened. Saul had scales on his eyes. He was blind. And a blind can't lead to blind except they fall in a ditch. I got news for you. We cannot lead nobody if we don't stay in the Bible. We can't Tell nobody what thou said, Lord. The Bible says, study, your, study to show yourself approved unto God and then unto man. But many of us are misled because we give our own theory. But when you are preaching or teaching God's word, you ought to have some evidence that God is real in your life. Psalms. So, had scales on his eyes. But watch. It says those that were with him led him to the street, then to Ananias. And watch Ananias when you are going to a powerful, powerful Christian. You watch what happens. Ananias was a man of God because God had, Jesus had already spoke to Ananias before Saul ever got there. He had spoke to him, and, 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 but, but Ananias said, Lord, I heard of this man, and I heard that he was a bad man. The Lord told Ananias, said, huh, no more that he's a praying man. When, when, when Jesus get through with us sometimes, you act like you don't know how to pray. But when Jesus get through with us, I guarantee you, you'll know how to call upon his holy name. And when you call upon his holy name, tears roll from your eyes and you'll shake your head and you don't care who's around you, but you'll call upon the name of Jesus. So he went to Ananias, and when he went to Ananias, said Ananias, began to talk, and Ananias laid his hand upon him and said, the scales fell from uh, Saul's eyes, but not only fall fell from his eyes, but uh, mm, Saul was changed, and that name came Paul, and Paul, I'm going to tell you what, he was a man of God, but uh, I got news for you. When you got scales on your eyes and you're blind, you need somebody to help you to see the way because the scales on your eyes will cause you to stumble over the thing that God is doing for you. So Saul, say that. I had, I, I had it all rolled out, but I, I, I couldn't go there. 
The Bible says Saul stayed there three days and he preached. And, and, and watch this. Sir. You cannot tell me what Jesus won't do when he come into your life because when Jesus come in your life, you will never be the same. When you come in the contact of Jesus and you fully accept him, you will never be the same. The things that you used to do, you won't do them no more. Many times, Many times in our life, you ever seen one of those halfway Christians? I'm talking about, Lord have mercy, a movie star Christian. Have you ever noticed <laughs> those cowboys in the, in the city and they get to fight? <laughs> You don't mind me preaching a little while, do you? Uh, they get to fighting, and when they're fighting, they never lose their hat. <laughs> Lord have mercy. <laughs> I got news for you, church. Uh, we are in a battle today. <laughs> We are on that Damascus Road, and by us being on the Damascus Road, some of us need to be converted. Lord have mercy, because all of us haven't really made a change. But I got news for you, Jesus is calling. How do you know me, Maze, that Jesus is calling? Calling. Uh, you done made it through the virus. Uh, you done made it through the trial and tribulation. Uh, you didn't come this far by yourself. Uh, but one thing about it, uh, Jesus uh, has brought you through it. Uh, Lord have mercy. Uh, you need to hold on uh, to God's unchanging hand. Uh, I don't care today uh, where you come from. Uh, I don't care where you've been, but one thing about it, Jesus, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the light. Oh, God. I got to quit. I got to quit. One thing about it, Jesus, he came down through 42 generations. He came down for me and you. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. And when he came down, they called him everything except a child of God. They put 72 thorns upon his head. The blood came streaming down. He came down for me and you. And one thing about it, when he came down, they whipped him until a flush separated from the bone. He done it for me and you. You ought to be able to hear the call now. One thing about it, they laid that old rugged cross upon his shoulder. He done it for me and you. Headed him towards Calvary. Yes, he done it for me and you. It didn't stop there. They laid him upon the cross. Three nails Rivet his feet, uh, rivet his hand, uh, picked him up, uh, dropped him in a hole. Uh, he never said uh, a mumbly word. Uh, he hung there uh, until uh, his head uh, fell in the flock to his shoulder. Uh, yes, he did. Uh, he done it for me and you. Uh, Joseph, uh, standing by the cross, uh, asked for his body. Uh, they took him, uh, buried him uh, in Joseph. The new tune. Uh, he laid there Friday night. Uh, he laid there uh, Saturday night. Uh, but I'm so glad uh, that he rose uh, early one Sunday morning. Uh, he rose uh, for me and you. Uh, Lord have mercy. Uh, I don't care uh, what color you are, uh, but it's for me and you. Uh, I don't care uh, where you come from, uh, but it's for me and you. Jesus yeah. is calling. Yeah. Jesus is calling. Yeah. Here, <clears throat> Jesus called this morning. Jesus is calling. 
I heard many say, said Jesus done this. No, you need to go to the book of Job. He told Job, when the devil talked to him, he said, if you take the whole head, hedge it off around him, you watch what happened. He told Jesus, he said, he'll cuss you your face. But one thing about it, when Jesus took his hand off of Job, things began to happen. Can I tell you what, church? We sing that God bless America. Yes, we are blessed. Many of them said Jesus done this. No, he didn't. But we done it to ourselves. We done it to ourselves. Jesus just pulled back from us. And let us see what would happen in our life if we pull away from him. I got news for you. We log Union Baptist Church. Whatever you do, get close to Jesus. He's closer than ever. He's closer than ever. And I'm so sad that all this riot is going on for one man and they won't stand up for Jesus. This is sad. Church, get together whatever you may do. Trust in the Lord. Yes, we're going to have some trials and tribulation. We're going to have some ups and downs. Yes, we are going through something. But he said, I am the way, the truth, and the light. If you walk in the light, the darkness cannot overcome you. Hold on to God's unchanging hand. Father, in the name of Jesus, <coughs> let your spirit please fall on these few that is gathered here today. Watch over them, Father. Let no hurt, harm, or danger come to them. Oh, God, they are trusting in you. They believe in you. Oh, merciful God, as we have a symbol here outside the sanctuary, you know, God, that we don't have to be in the sanctuary to serve you, but we are out here and we'll still serve you. Thank you, Father. I pray a blessing upon you. All upon my boys this morning. Touch them, Father. Touch them in a mighty way. Bless their home. Bless their children. Bless their surrounding. Bless their job. Oh, merciful God, bless them in the blessing they stand in need of. Then, Father, I pray for Pastor May and his family. God, I thank you for him. Oh, merciful God. I believe that he's a man of God, and I believe the teaching and the preaching that he's doing. There will be many saved. Thank you, Father, for the message. Thank you, Father. I know that I started out reading the paper, but you took it away from me. Thank you, Father. I've done what you told me to do. In the name of Jesus the Christ, I pray. Pray of the Amen. I'm standing this morning. There may be someone that on that same road that Saul went down. 
head. I got news for you. Jesus is calling this morning. I wouldn't leave here without accepting Jesus as my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You have a man of God standing here in your presence, ready to pray with you. You never know what the next minute to the next second may bring. I would not leave here. I would not leave here in the same way that I come. Jesus is calling. Jesus is calling. There may be one that won't be coming this morning while he is playing. Pastor, you stand. We don't have to lay hands on you like Ananias did. But we can stand six feet from you and pray with you. Don't leave here. I'm begging you, please. Don't leave here. If you got any kind of problem, don't leave here. I'm begging you as God's man. I, don't leave here. Please. I done saw so many going through this, what is happening. Please, if you go on this morning, come. Just because you're praying doesn't mean that church is over here. You still have time. Amazing Grace 104.
you all for coming out and worshiping with us today. Um, wasn't it great? Amen. As far as announcements on the week, uh, just Wednesday night Bible studies. Also, uh, keeping up with our, our family church reading, uh, if you'll read Esther chapters 4 and 5 this week. So you should, at the end of the week, you should be read through 1 through 5. It's not a lot of reading. But even if you've already read the book, read it again. Because the, the practice here is as a church family, we're doing this together. So, so one through five. Um, outside of that, also, if you'll uh, send me a, a text or a call and let me know what you think about meeting outside as we continue on, I'd like to hear from you, uh, each on that, uh, just to help us guide where, where else we're going. Right? That, that's all I have. Uh, Bill Mays, do you have an office for your church?